Hi guys, um, welcome to the Cozy Cardigans podcast. It is episode 17. It has been a while. Um, my name is Melanie, also known as Cozy Cardigans on Instagram and on Ravelry. And I'm also the owner and dyer for Big Little Yarn Co. And welcome back to my channel. Um, it's been at least three weeks. Yeah, three weeks since the last time I've posted. Um, I was planning on posting earlier, but um, I took a little, little, but quite a long staycation. I was just knitting and spinning and reading all day um, trying to plan out what my next update will look like still in the middle of that so um, more news coming about the next shop update later but later as in not in this episode probably I'm still I like have almost all the plans but I just have to finalize the dates and stuff anyways so um I do have few things to show you um not as many whips because I've been really good you if you watched my last episode you will see that I kind of went crazy on the whip train so I think I had like five works in progress I still have a ton but during the last few weeks I've been really good with um just working on one thing at a time one or two things at a time so let me start with finished objects i have a couple so the first one here is this this one here and this is what the yoke looks like this is the oh my god i'm blanking Oh my gosh, I don't know why I blanked out on the name, but this is the Silix Alba Pullover Sweater by Elk Market Lotta of Elk Market Yarns, or Elk Market on Instagram. And this is a test knit for her. This is not um, blocked yet, because um, I was recently at my brother's-in-law's house, and I don't have my blocking stuff there, and I finished it there, so... I have to block it after this video, so I'm not blocked yet, but looks really good. Almost tipped over. It's still a little wrinkly here at the yoke, but um, this is a pattern that's coming out soon. Um, I think in about a week from now, as of today. Today is the 2nd of November. Um, so yeah, this is her Silex Alba pullover. I love how it turned out. It's very autumnal. I love the contrast between these two colorways. So I used um, my own Big Little Yarn Co. yarn in the 100% um, Superwash Merino fingering base. And um, it is a fingering weight base, but I held the yarn together to create like a DK worsted weight and um, I think it turned out really well so this green part here is komorebi and matcha held together so it makes this really nice like very subtle variegated kind of fabric when it's knit up I guess and then the top part this um, very dark dark purpley red part is yummy um, just held together on itself and then yeah I think the contrast worked out really well I was a little worried that it was gonna look a little Christmassy because of the kind of like twiggy motif here but I don't think it does I think it looks really autumnal and really nice um, it would be nice to wear at during Christmas I guess but um, other than that yeah it turned out really well no modifications um, it is a three-quarter sleeve it's a little shorter 
the I guess the only modification I did was I as usual cropped the length I think it's supposed to like be down here but I'm always wearing high-waisted pants so I always crop my my sweaters to fit um, my high-waisted stuff so that's the only thing um, it's really hot um, it's still super hot here in Las Vegas I think Today it's going to be like in the 80s Fahrenheit and I'm kind of sweating in this thing because the fabric is so thick because it is fingering weight yarn held together. But I did it for you guys. I'll push through. Um, so yeah, still have to block but it looks really pretty and um, I'm really happy with it. It was a quicker knit. I don't think I've knit a non-fingering weight sweater in like, I want to say at least one or two years and I forgot how much quicker it goes when it's not fingering weight. So yeah, this was a quick knit for me. I'm really happy with it. Yeah. And um, I do have one more finished object and it's um, from my scrap yarn from this sweater actually. I had a lot. I still have quite a bit of um, the Komorebi Matcha and the Yami, especially the Yami because I only needed it for this yoke part here. But um, I haven't knit a beanie or a hat in forever. Um, I don't usually wear them because it is so usually so hot. Um, it doesn't. When I lived in California or Southern California, it never made sense to me to wear beanies except for like maybe once or twice a year in like January or something when it does actually get kind of cold. And then here in Vegas, it does get really cold during the winter like last year. Even though it is the desert, it did snow like for a hot second. So it does get really cold here. And then also I'm planning to hopefully go back to Japan in the beginning of next year and um, where I am it does get really cold so I had the perfect amount to make a little beanie and so I decided on this is called the Western Sky it's by Boylan Networks and it's a beret that's what it looks like and the texture you could tell the texture of it but it is kind of hard to see the like um, not cable works but like the eyelet lace bits because it is a bit variegated, but I kind of like that. That you could kind of tell that it's textured, but not really sure what it is. And then there's like little bobbles. So yeah, I'm really happy with it. Um, I knit, actually, yeah, I knit um, a beret for a family. The last thing, I, the last hat I knit, it was a beret for a family friend, and then. I tried it on and then I loved it. I guess I'll try it on for you. I'm still trying to figure out how to wear this thing. Yeah, something like that. Anyways, I think it's really cute. It's too hot to wear right now, but I think it's really cute and would be toasty and like a nice accessory when I am back in a colder climate. Um, but yeah, this was like a one or two day knit. A nice little palette cleanser because I've been knitting sweaters nonstop. So it's nice to knit something a little different. And then I feel like berets take a little shorter time than beanies do because the decreases are so quick once you get to the top part to make that little like flat hat shape. So once you finish increasing and then you start decreasing, it goes by really fast. So yeah, this is the Western Sky by uh, Boylet Networks. Super quick. And I do have technically one more FO. It's that secret um, work in project that I had last episode where I put like the oops clouds on if you watched that one. But um, now it's now that it's done I really can't show it to you so um, I'll show that to you when 
the pattern is out and I can talk all about it because I really love it and I'm really excited to wear it during the fall and it's like seriously sangria looks so good so um yeah those are the FOs hold on my battery's dying okay sorry guys my battery was dying and I had to change it out um but uh I also remembered while I was changing the battery about my um, Western Sky Beanie. So I um, totally did not even talk about this. But um, so I used the Komorebi and Matcha held together. I think the pattern calls for a DK weight yarn. Um, so yeah, I held those two together. And I also used size 7 needles to make this beanie or beret. Um, I always feel like, um, Boil and Knit Works is, um, recommended needle sizes are always too small for me, like two to three sizes too small for me. I think she has quite a loose, um, like gauge. So, yeah, just to uh, let you know that you might have to change out your, um, needles if you do plan on knitting any of her stuff if you haven't knit any of her stuff before that's what I found but yeah so two fingering weight yarns held together works out really well I'm pretty happy with it and then yeah so the I do have that secret FO that I was just talking to you about and then um I also have like a bunch of other test knits I'm working on so let me, hmm, what should I do? I guess I'll talk about those first. So I do have, one, another test knit. Um, I'm also test knitting or um, preview knitting a Brooklyn Tweed upcoming Brooklyn Tweed pattern and I can't show you that either so I only have two things I can really show you and then all the other um, non-test knitting stuff I've just been kind of putting it on the back burner because there's no due date on those and I do have a due date for these so this is the Bragna I believe that's how you say Bragna sweater um, this is a test knit for um, Covive. She's Covive on Instagram, and her name's Dia. She's a Japanese knitwear designer, and she has a wonderful sweater pattern that I'm super excited to finish. So this is the Bragna sweater, and I'm using Himawari, and then. For these stripes here, I'm using Bramble, and then the green here is Lichen. And this is on my Superwash Merino Nylon Fingering Base. And I'm so excited to finish this. I love how the stripes are coming out. It's just like a really fun, colorful sweater that I'm super excited to wear. I think it would be really great with like my jeans and stuff. So this sweater, I'm inching away. I think I have, a, I think, four more um, of these segment repeats. And then I start on the sleeves. But um, Himawari is knitting up so pretty. I'm alternating skeins so that there's no color pooling. And it's just so pretty. And um, I love how these stripes look it's like a slip stitch stripe so it's like it kind of pops out against the stockinette of the main color and um, the collar is supposed to have that this like same type of slip stitch um, not motif but stitches around the collar and then the arms will also have stripes as well so super excited um, super easy to knit I love I'm loving it so far I love I used to be obsessed with striped stuff like I would wear striped shirts all the time and nowadays I don't wear as many stripes anymore but I'm really excited to 
put this in my wardrobe. And I also don't have any yellow stuff. Um, but yeah, super excited. So this is going. So I'm pretty much knitting exclusively on this because this is kind of due soon. Um, but we'll make it work. We'll make it work. So that is a work in progress. And also another work in progress that I've been kind of just like knitting maybe like one or two rows on a day because I am just trying to get my test knits done. Um, it is my um, Stephen West mystery knit along shawl. So if you do not want to see the um, clues, I'm pretty behind. I think this is technically one... I guess clue two still I'm super behind so I mean it's not like I'm totally up to date the MCAL is finished now all of the clues have been sent out so um you might have already seen the shawl already anyways but just letting you know if you don't want to see what I've got then I recommend skipping forward a few minutes so that you're not um, you don't get spoiled by the design so anyway, so this is the uh, Stephen West Mystery Knit Along. I am using all of my Halloween colorways for this. Um, it calls for four colorways, or four colors. One, two skeins of one main color, and then three um, contrast colors. And I do have five uh, Halloween colors, but two of them, ET and Coraline, I'm alternating as the main color that may so that it makes four. So yeah, it's going really well. I'm super excited about it. Um, so this is the first clue. It's kind of hard to show. So the blue is Coraline and ET alternating. And then um, these are technically like stripes of Hereditary and The Shining. But it makes this really like, you can't really tell that there's stripes, it's just this really subtle kind of hexagons, I guess. So yeah, it's knitting up really pretty. And then after that, you get to this little band here. And this one's a little hard to tell as well, but the again, the blue is Coraline and ET. And then these little like whitish specks is actually Beetlejuice, but again, it's really subtle, which I really love actually. And then right now I'm currently on clue two, I think it's two or three, I kind of lost track. I'm pretty sure this is one, this is like the bonus, and then this is clue two, so. Um, right now, these little squares are like supposed to form like a diamond shape with the main color but right now I won't can't really tell what's happening um, but this is um, this is the shining yeah. this is the shining and then I just finished the Beetlejuice section so yeah it's coming along really well it's already getting really big um, yeah, it's just really fun. It's such a fun pattern to knit. He, Stephen West, is just so good at making patterns that are just really fun. Like, you could just be in the moment with these patterns and just really enjoy how the shawl or whatever is, like, coming out to be. Even though I know what it's going to look like, it's just such a joy to see it grow. So yeah, I'm really enjoying this knit. I can't wait to be able to just like knit on it the whole day, but sign up for too many toast knits as usual. And um, so I'm enjoying those as well. But those two are pretty much what I've been kind of concentrating on. Um, I think that's it for my knitting stuff actually, just cause, um, yeah, I've just been working on one or two projects at a time, so um, I don't have like a whole pile to show you like I did last time, which is good, I guess. Um, but I do have like a half finished spin, I guess. I do have another skein of this stuff to spin, but 
did finish one skein. This lovely hand spun. Um, so I used two different braids to make this. Um, the orange, yellow, and green, and some of the blue bits, so that ply, is from Three Waters Farm. Um, they're an Etsy shop, and um, the colorway was Bright Synopsis. Yeah. And then the like very dark blue kind of ply. Um, that one's just like a very... It was pretty, um, it wasn't like a variegated color or anything, it was just all blue-green, dark blue-green, and that was a braid that I got in, while well, I was in, I think, Tokyo about a couple of years back, so it's been in my stash for a little while. So I just two-plied those together from a, or, um, yeah, just plied those two together to make this and I think it looks so good. I have no idea what I'm going to make with it but I do have and still have uh, single balls of each of the braids that I need to make one more skein with. I couldn't, I don't have like jumbo bobbins or anything so my bobbins are a little small when it comes to plying so I can, I can only fit maybe like 250 yards ish on there so this is about 270. I kind of squeezed a little bit more yardage in before I couldn't add any more to the bobbin. But yeah, I love how this came out. It kind of, I don't know, it might be a little boastful, but it kind of reminds me of spin cycle yarns, something that they would make. But yeah, super proud and super happy with this. I think this is like the most, like, um, what do you call that like tension spin twist wise like the most even I've spun um, I kind of did a little something different with this one I decided to do like look not very low twist but as low as I can make it twist singles and then I did a high twist ply I don't know if those are the words for spinning because I'm very like intuitive when it comes to spinning my yarns. Um, but yeah, that's what I did. And then I just washed it, put it in a little, little skein. Um, but yeah, I still have one more skein to go. So this is like a half finished object. So super happy with that. Um, but that's like all my knitting fiber related stuff. I do have some acquisitions to show you though. And then after that I have some, I read a lot of books these past few weeks so I have a bunch of that too. So for acquisitions I do have quite a bit to show you. I went a little crazy. Um, I guess first I'll show you fiber because um, I showed you my spinning stuff. Um, so I already opened these, but I kept them in the bags. So this one is from Etsy. It's from Beautiful Fiber Life. Um, I think they're also Beautiful Fiber Life on Instagram. And they recently had, not recently, maybe like a couple weeks ago, had an update. So I got a bat and also a braid. Um, yeah, so this is their, their shop. Beautiful Fiber Life, and then, um, yeah, I'm super happy with how soft and lovely it is. Let me just pull up the um, info, the fiber info for this, because I'm terrible at remembering this stuff. Okay, so... I got this one. This is their... Jewel Tone Fiber Art Bat. And oh, look at that. It's so pretty. It's so soft, so pretty. So this is their bat. I love it. I don't usually go for things with sparkles in them, but when it comes to bats, I don't know. I just kind of like 
this is where I kind of go crazy with color I guess um, I feel like if I spin it it probably will mellow down the tone because the back is pretty kind of matte and muted it's just like a red in the back the most of the colorful stuff is in the front so it's got some Stellina let me just list out the fiber contents so it's got wool silk targi bamboo tussa silk merino black baby alpaca and rainbow sparkle so it's got a lot of stuff in it i think it'd be really fun to spin and probably end up applying it together with something more muted to make a more kind of in the middle of the road type of yarn because i really love after i spun this i realized that i really love spinning like one ply that's kind of crazy and then the other ply being kind of like mellow to kind of even each other out. And I think that really makes a really pretty um, variegated yarn to knit up. So because I am the type of spinner who likes to knit with the things they spin. I know there's some knitters who just love to spin to spin and that's like amazing but I really love having the finished object so anyways um i also got this beautiful braid from them i love like this colors that they chose for it it's like wine purple dark teal it's got some olive green in there super pretty it's so soft um so this is their mixed BFL silk. It's 8515 BFL silk. And guys, so soft. So excited to spin with this. Yeah. I love it. Mm, I love it. It's so soft. I feel like I could sleep with this. Yeah. So that is what I've got. From them, it's like my little fiber treat. I still have a ton of fiber left in my stash, and I accidentally added to it, but whatever. Um, and then the other ones is a bit more like notions type of stuff. So this first one here, I got myself a project bag. It is so cute. I love the pattern on it. This is from, just make sure I get their name right, Aria and Bar. They're on Etsy. And I'll put all the links down below if you were interested in checking out all these shops. But this is Aria and Bar on Etsy. And this is their small drawstring bag. Um, it's just like the perfect um, sock bag kind of size very small um but i love i saw this fabric and i love fell in love with it immediately and then the inside is like a green so it's like a kind of a can shape cylindrical shape and then you can also kind of flip it out and it'll stand on itself so it's like a one sock skein size kind of bag and then it's Got like a quilted, let me see if I can turn it inside out. It's kind of quilted in the inside, which I really love. It's really soft. I could feel there's batting in there. Um, and then it's got a little, little loophole here. And then it's the drawstring, so you can just draw it closed. And it's like this cute little thing. Yeah, I love the, I love this fabric. It kind of reminds me of the art style in like Sleeping Beauty from Disney. These like willow trees. It's very like fairy tale like, so I love that. So super happy with this purchase. It'll hold my sock projects. Um, so there is that. So And then the next two 
our stitch markers. So this is from Tilting Planet. They are really active on, well, not really active, but I found them on Instagram. Their Etsy shop updates sell out so fast. Um, I had to really like hop on it when it came to getting this thing. Um, cause they are a, they kind of specialize in, ha um, hand whittled, hand whittled wooden stitch markers. Um, and it is always so cute. And so I got their little ghost stitch marker for like Halloween, but also I think it's super cute anyways, no matter what time of the year it is. So, um, they always name their stuff, so... Says, hello my name is Wirt which I think is so cute so you could kind of see they also like make these little figurines um, but yeah they're Tilting Planet on Instagram they also have an Etsy shop and then I opened this but I put it back in the box again because so cute. So this is their little hand whittled wooden ghost stitch marker. How cute is that? Look at his face. So cute. And so happy with it. It's like such a simple little knitting tree, I guess. Like it's not something that's necessary when it comes to knitting but is most definitely something to put a smile on your face when you come across it um while you're knitting and i think it's just like something super special i love it when people um make stuff just out of their hands and then i could make something out of my hands using something they made I just love that chain um so yeah super happy with it tilting planet super cute i think they're starting to do kind of like um christmas themed things now but yeah this was their halloween stuff they also had um along with the ghosty they had a tooth guy and um i can't remember what else but the other stuff was super cute um so yeah super happy with that and then, oh, this is their shop name. They also included some little simple stitch markers, which is always welcome. I'm always losing them. And then a little candy, which is nice. So yeah, that is that. And then also, last thing so yeah i went a little crazy it's a lot of stuff but it's because i was out of the out of town for the last couple of weeks and then i couldn't show it to you guys as it came but um so this one is a new to me maker I just found her instagram maybe about a month ago um her name is Holly Bank Slane. She's also Holly Bank Slane on Instagram. And she is a ceramicist, I guess is what you would call people who make ceramics. Um, she makes accessories like necklaces and um, jewelry and earrings, which are all really pretty. But she also is a knitter, so she makes um, handmade ceramic stitch markers. And they are so pretty. So this is the main guy. So I got her stitch marker set. It's the main guy. And then there's also four of these little teardrop kind of ceramic stitch markers. So these are super pretty, super special. And they're all like a little different from each other, which I think is really nice. It's got that little gold dot there too. So yeah, I'm really in love with this whole set i love the gold and now i have so many stitch markers but hopefully i don't lose these these are all super special to me um yeah she's really sweet we messaged each other i messaged her um 
about her stitch markers and then she messaged me back she's a really sweet person i highly recommend you check her out um on instagram or on her online shop but yeah that is it it's a lot of stitch markers um probably will not buy stitch markers for a while because i just have so many um but yeah that is it for my acquisitions like yarn related acquisitions um i do have a couple or a few book acquisitions um so about a few days ago i went to a secondhand bookstore and i got like 10 books and um i would want to show you guys but i don't know if you'd be down to hear me talk about 10 books that i haven't read yet because i still have to talk about the ones i have read um, so I just wanted to show you three books that I've recently got that I think will be like my next read. So like I have them on my, I don't really have a bedside table, but I keep them on the bedside so that once I finish a book, I could just pick one of these up. Um, and these are all very like spoopy themed, even though Halloween's over, I'm still going on that train. It's still not autumn yet here. So I'm like waiting for it to be autumn. Um, and so I still feel, <sighs> sorry, my memory card, but, um, what was I talking about? Yeah, so autumn has not come yet. I'm still on that spooky, dreary, gothic vibe train when it comes to the media that I consume, whether it be movies or books. So these are all kind of spooky, but tis the season. So, um, yeah, so this is, so the first one is this, His Bloody Project, and it is, I believe, from what I heard, um, it's about a murder, and, wow, I'm really bad at summarizing this because I'm honestly not too sure myself, but it's uh, about a murder, you know who is the pulp perpetrator and you know what happens you just don't know why so it's kind of a book exploring that so if you like murder mysteries i think you would like this and then this one here i think is beautiful by the way but um this is a short story collection i love short story collections and this is a um magical realism um, kind of uh short story collections and my favorite one of my favorite genres um other than horror is magical realism so i'm really excited to dive into this it's called of this new world by allegra hyde and then another book that i've been eyeing for a while never got around to is Poor Things by Alastair Gray. And this is kind of like a retelling of Frankenstein, um, but kind of more twisted in a way. Um, it's about a man who finds a dead woman's body in a river and um, puts, replaces her or brings her back to life with the brain of an infant. So it's a bit kind of like a commentary on um, how women are treated and um, feminism and things like that. Yeah, still have to read it for to talk about it. But anyways, sounds really creepy. I've been eyeing it for a while, so that is that. So those are three books I'm planning on reading that I recently got. But I did read a lot of books these past few weeks. Um, if you are not interested in reading, then I guess this is it. Um, but if you are interested in reading, stick along, stick along, stick around, and we can talk about reading. So if you're not interested in reading, goodbye. Thank you for coming. You don't have to watch this if you don't want to. Um, I'm still really happy that you stuck around for the knitting part, um, but I'll talk to you non-readers next time. No worries if you don't read. Um, still love you. 
But um, for those of you who do read and are interested in what I've been reading, um, a lot of you have messaged me and asked me to be your Goodreads friends and that makes me feel really happy. <laughs> um, I don't really know anybody like in real life, like people I have phone numbers to kind of real life that actually read. So it's really nice to be able to Instagram message other knitters um, and talk about books that we've been reading because there are so many people outside of my general vicinity who read and that makes me really happy. Um, and sometimes I do like um, bookish questions stuff on my Instagram stories on Big Little Yarn Co. or on Cozy Cardigans, but um, last time I asked you what your favorite book that you've read recently and so many people answered and I found so many good recommendations but also I found so many people who have the same book taste as me which is so good. So yeah, um, let me see here what I have read. Let's see, where did I, let me see what I, um, let me see what I ended with last time. Let me just take a look at my, so, oh man, I have read a lot of books since then. So last time I think I was still reading Eleanor and I finished that a while ago. So, 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 I also listen to a lot of audiobooks. Um, as a knitter and spinner, sometimes it's, I mean, I do read while I knit sometimes, but sometimes I just don't want to mess with that and I just kind of want to sit and chill and an audiobook is the perfect companion for that. And I also can't watch movies and shows while I spin. I, I kind of have to always be looking down on my what my hands are doing. So audiobooks are always my go-to when I spin as well. So the last time we talked, I finished, I'm thinking of ending things. So since then, I've listened to or read 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 14 books, which is a lot. So I'm just going to like flash summarize them because I don't want to keep you for that long. First thing I listened to was, or first thing I finished was an audiobook called Kids of Appetite by David Arnold. Um... Audiobook, it's got like a few voice actors in it. So if you do like multiple voice actors in your audiobooks, I do recommend this. This is a young adult fiction. It's about loss. It's about family and what it means to be a family, whether it's blood related or through like people you love being family, um, even though they're not blood related. Um, it's a young adult fiction, so it's quite a simple read. Um, I do like to listen to young adult fictions when I'm kind of dying yarn, just because I need to concentrate on the dying versus the book, and it's just really easy to listen to. So I gave this 4 out of 5 stars. The next book that I listened to was also a young adult fiction novel called The River Man by Aaron Starmer. I gave this one 3.5 stars just because don't remember why, <laughs> but um, it wasn't, it, it was good. It was a good middle grade novel. I, however, am not middle grade, so I kind of saw a few things that were kind of iffy for me, like that I didn't really, really like, but the storyline is good. I could see myself loving this book if I was, you know, a preteen. So, um, I gave this one 3.5 stars out of 5 stars. The next book I listened to was Daddy Long Legs by Jean Webster. And this is a, not a classic, but it's from the Victorian era, not Victorian era. It's from like the early 1900s, um, quite an old book. It's a short story. It's a episcopal episcopal, episcopal story. So it's written in letter form but I listened to it on audiobook, but it still worked out pretty well. So this is through the main character, um, Joshua, 
Abbott, and she gets pretty much like a scholarship from this rich man who she doesn't really know because she's an orphan, and he decides to fund her education to further her education to become a writer and his only requirement is that she write him a letter every month and so this is her letters to this person who she calls daddy long legs because um she doesn't know who he is she just knows him through the orphanage that she grew up in so yeah that's pretty much it i give this four out of five stars it's pretty cute pretty quick read um nice and easy and um very heartwarming as well so yeah four out of five um the next book i listened to was the perfect the perfect girl by gilly mcmillan and this one what was this one about oh this one was about this follows a young girl um joy Maisley, and she was in a DUI accident that killed three of her friends back when she was like 16 and now she's back out um, living with her fam with her stepfather, her stepbrother and her mom and her you know that her mom dies and in the beginning you don't know who did it um, how it happened why it happened so you're kind of just following that mystery it's a, it's an okay mystery thriller is kind of cheesy it's just one of those um you know those mystery thriller novels that just kind of it's just there for the mystery thriller and nothing else so i gave it three out of five the mystery was good um everything else was meh so um the next book i read was the helios disaster and i can't and I have a tough time saying their name, but it's by Linda Bostrung Nausgaard. And um, I believe it is translated from the Swedish. Yeah, Swedish. It's translated, translated from Swedish. Um, and it is a, not really retelling, but um, the goddess Athena, if the goddess Athena had uh, depression and was kind of thrown into this world because she's birthed from Zeus by um, she kind of like busts out of Zeus's head is the mythology behind her birth and it's like what if she's in current day Sweden and she busts out of Zeus's head as a full-grown woman or a teenager in this case and she has depression um, so not really a retelling, but more of like a what if in twist in mythology. So if you do like mythological characters, this is quite a fun read. Um, kind of sad, but also fun. Um, I gave this one four out of five stars. The next book I read was Eleanor by Jason Gurley. And this book was really good. I really enjoyed this one. This one um, kind of took a turn towards places that I didn't know it would go, I guess. Um, it starts off looking like it's going to be a literary fiction novel, like a very in our world realistic novel, but it's actually magical realism, fantasy, sci-fi kind of novel. So it's got that little twist in it. So if you aren't super into sci-fi fantasy, but do like a hint of it, I do really recommend this book. And I gave this one four out of five stars and the next book I listened to was Rules for Vanishing by Kate Alice Marshall. I gave this one five out of five stars. This was this uh, young adult fiction. I listened to this as an audiobook and it gave me nightmares. So I highly recommend. It's very very rare for any scary horror movie or book to give me nightmares and um this is a middle grade novel so i really wasn't expecting it to be that scary but it's really creepy and i highly recommend it um it's really great as an audiobook um i'm guessing it would be really good as a regular book as well but the narrator for the audiobook was really good um 
Oh, I should probably talk about what it is. Um, so, Rules for Vanishing is about the... Um, it's like a... kind of like a Blair Witch, like, found footage type of uh, fake documentary, like a faux documentary type of thing, but it's in a book. And so it's got mystery, it's got missing people, um, it goes from present time to the past to show, like, what happened, why it happened, and then you kind of just follow along throughout the book to find out why things are the way they are. And it's really creepy, really good. Um, next thing I listened to on audiobook was The ba Ballad of Black Tom by Victor Lavelle, and it's kind of a, um, it kind of plays off of uh, Lovecraft's, um, horror books, except, like, very loosely, and it's really good, it's very short, it's a novella, actually, but I listened to it on audiobook, and it was, like, it was just maybe two hours or three hours long, so, like, a movie length, if you want to just, um, listen to a quick, kind of creepy story. I gave this four out of five stars, it's called Ballad of Black Tom again. And yeah, it was really good. Um, next book I read was Madame Zero, and it's a short story collection by Sarah Hall, and I gave this four out of five stars, and this one's just a magical realism short story collection. As I said, I love magical realism a lot, so whenever there's a short story collection in the magical realism genre, I kind of just jump on it, and usually I really like it. So. It's got really weird stories, um, I love her prose, and let me see, it also kind of, um, not only is her stuff magical realism though, but it also does have like social commentary in it, but um, yeah, there, th it was really good, <laughs> sorry, really bad summary, but it was really good, if you're into magical realism, I highly recommend it. Um, another book that I read was Brother by Anya Alborn. Um, I gave this 5 out of 5 stars. This book was gross. Um, I had to... N I usually... I really like to read books while I eat. I couldn't eat while I read this book. So if you're not into gore, not into very descriptive horror, then I don't recommend this for you, but if you do really like it and you do really like horror and thriller stuff and aren't too queasy about it, I do recommend this book a lot. Um, I gave this 5 out of 5 stars. And then I read Ghost Wall by Sarah Moss, and this one is a not a thriller, but more like a very uncomfortable family vacation type of thing. It's very hard to describe. Um, it's not really thriller, but it does make you feel uncomfortable. Um, I gave this 4 out of 5. It's a novella, quite short. Um, so if you're not too into scary things, but you do want to read something that's not creepy, but makes you feel like something's wrong, then this is the book for you. Then after that, I read The Beauty by Aliyah Whiteley, and um, I gave this four out of five stars, and this book was weird. Um, it's about a apocalyptic world where women are, um, the women all die out because of this fungal disease where they kind of, these mushrooms start growing inside of them and then they die because they're just filled with mushrooms and then the only people left on earth are men and so it's like the last of the men and they're trying to figure out what to do they're just living their last days because obviously human can't humans can't reproduce but then they realize that the mushrooms that the women have been consumed by are turning into women so there's these mushroom women and it sounds really weird, but it's actually really gross, and it makes you look at mushrooms differently. So if you're into weird sci-fi horror thrillers, then that might be for you. Um, and then I read Home Before Dark by Riley Sager, and this was a very, or this is a very popular Halloween horror read. Um, it's 
pretty much like Haunting of Hill House, the show on Netflix. If you really like that show, then you might really like this book. Um, the only thing different is obviously the ending. Um, so that's a little different, but other than that, it was good. Quite, quite scary. Scary haunted house type of book. And, um, so if you're into that, I highly recommend it. I gave it 4 out of 5. Then the last book I've read is The Devil All the Time by Donald Ray Pollock. I gave this 5 out of 5 stars. I listened to this as an audiobook. And this is, um, the book that The Devil All the Time, the Netflix movie, is based off of. I haven't watched the movie yet, but I am planning to watch it. And the book was really good. It's, um, a thriller where there's different people that are somehow connected together and then you finally see the connection like towards the end that kind of book and so that was really good um yeah that was a really quick fire things i read stuff um hope you hope at least a few of you are still here and have written down some books that you'd like to read um I am currently reading four books, but I'm too tired to talk about them. But really quickly, it's The Summer of the Ubume by Natsuhiko Kyogoku. It's a thriller, uh, I guess psychological thriller kind of book. It's translated from Japanese. Um, I am also listening to not listening, I'm also reading There Once Lived a Woman Who Tried to Kill Her Neighbor's Baby, Scary Fairy Tales by Ludmia Petrushevskaya, and it's translated from Russian, and it's just a collection of scary fairy tales, or it's not really fairy tales from long ago, It's, but it's written as if it was a fairy tale. Um, they're all mostly stories based in Russia during like the mid to late 1900s, so like the 1960s or 70s. Um, I'm not really too sure about Russian history, so I'm not sure. I'm also listening to an audiobook called And the Trees Crept In by Don Kurtrugich. Kurtrugich. But this audiobook's really good so far. Um, it's got the voice actor is really good and it's also got um, sound effects so when like the house is creaking there's like creaking sound effects so I think it's really cool um, so I do recommend it as an audiobook even though I haven't finished listening to it and then I'm also reading another short story collection called You Will Never Be Forgotten by Mary South and this is also another magical realism short story but it's more of like a absurdist magical realism or fantasy um, short story collection so yeah super weird um, but yeah still reading that and yeah that is finally it thank you all so much for sticking around for so long talking about books with me talking about knitting um, please let me know if you have read any of the books I've mentioned or have any recommendations for me for any books. I pretty much read anything, so, um, any recommendations are welcome. Um, please let me know what you've been knitting so far, what you've been up to, um, and I hope to talk to you soon. Thank you so much for sticking around. I really do appreciate it. And, um, yeah, have a great beginning of your November. Bye.